Hello everyone. So welcome to this uh, first edition uh, of a webinar series organized uh, by uh, Enterprise Europe Network and European Digital Innovation Hubs, co-funded by the European Commission. So I'm Tom Lene from uh, BDI and EN West, located in Brittany, uh, France. Um, so this uh, webinar series, do, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. <laughs> so this webinar series is called Navigating the Future because it will address uh, the maritime sector and its digital transition. And the first edition is dedicated to cybersecurity and resilience for harbors and logistics. Um, the objective of this webinar is to give highlights on the current di dynamics, uh, opportunities and threats uh, and give the floor to companies uh, at the cutting edge of technology and that are preparing uh, Europe for the future. So during this webinar, uh, you will be able to, to ask a question in the Q&R uh, section and our team of uh, advisors and experts will answer at the end of the of their presentation. Um, of course, uh, these webinars will be a very good opportunity to get to know solution providers, uh, companies, uh, and start your future collaboration. So don't, do not hesitate to contact them after a while uh, or contact us uh, if you want uh, us to organize some uh, matchmaking with them. So uh, this webinar uh, will be composed of uh, a keynote expert talk um, given by Laura Bruyer from uh, France Cyber Maritime on the challenges um, of cybersecurity for maritime companies. Um, and then uh, we will have uh, two pitching sessions from companies, uh, one um, dedicated to use cases uh, and another one um, on cybersecurity pure players. Uh, and in between, we will have a presentation of uh, the EN network, uh, the uh, European Digital Innovation Network, and how they can help you um, in achieving your uh, digital transition, resilience, um, and internationalization. So I wish you a good webinar, uh, and I give the floor to Laura Bruyer uh, for the keynote speech. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas, for the, the introduction. So, hello, I can change the slides. So hi, hello, my name is Laura Bouillet and I'm project manager at the, French, at the France Cyber Maritime, a French association. I will be presenting the various cyber risks and challenges in the port sector. I will start with a brief introduction of FCM. Then I will present some recent statistics on cyber attacks in the maritime and port industries. And I will conclude with the threats and risks facing these sectors. So what is France Cyber Maritime? France Cyber Maritime was established in France, in Brest, in Brittany, in November 2021, following a growing awareness among public and private stakeholders. This awareness was triggered by the cyber attack suffered by May, May, Maersk in 2017. SM has two main missions. The first one is increase the resilience of maritime and port operation to cyber threats. The second one was to develop a network of expertise in maritime cybersecurity. The first mission is carried out by the MCAT, the Maritime Computer Emergency Response Team, which is directly operated by the, the association by FCM. The MCAT is responsible for monitoring and coordinating incident response for stakeholders in the maritime or port sector, whether the victim is a member or not of the association. Uh, so here we can see our three types of membership of member in the associations and they are organized in three groups. The first include public sector entities like administration, state agency, or local authorities. The second consists of European maritime and port sector actors. And this is uh, new information since, since this year. The association has been welcoming European stakeholders from these sectors. 
And the third group is made up of cybersecurity experts. And this group consists solely of French experts. As you can see, Franciba My Team facilitates communication between four stakeholders and the cybersecurity sector. Franciba My Team supports maritime and port stakeholders in their efforts to improve their cybersecurity levels. To do this, through its members, it offers the services shown in this diagram. Franciba Maritime does not provide services directly apart from MCERT. However, we do propose cooperative projects with our members, such as the sector specific and share security operation center. A quick note on the MCERT, which the association operates. It has various mission, as you can see on the pictures here is including monitoring maritime and port system. It also share information with our members and with similar organizations like Norma. Lars speak at the end of our webinar today. And another of its main mission is coordinating the response to cyber incident to help port and logistics actors. I have no doubt that you know why we are here today, but let's talk about some cyber attack statistics. Reports are vital to our economy. 19% of trade flow pass through ports. They are difficult to protect due to the numerous interconnections with shipping companies, custom logistics providers, and so on. The cost of an attack on a single link in the supply chain can be very serious, as we can see later. During the MERSC cyber attack, a large number of ships were stuck in ports, preventing other vessels for, from entering. This kind of bottleneck leads to a slowdown in the entire country's supply chain. Um, Many ports are undergoing digital transformation, adopting, for example, IoT, Internet of Things, AA, and big data to optimize operations. Interconnections are the bane of cybersecurity. While these technology bring efficiency, they also open up new attack vectors. Um, on this diagram, we, we can see uh, this diagram shows public cyber attacks on the maritime and port sectors from the 80s up to this year. And this data is collected by MSERT and published, published on the website on the base Admiral. Among recent public cyber attacks, we can mention the DDoS on the Trias port in Italy or the ransomware attack on the port of Nagoya in Japan. The attack of the port of Nagoya affected the Toyota factory, highlighting the importance of security ports to ensure the safety of the entire supply chain. We, we can also take as an example the IT slowdowns that affected the port of Seattle in the United States. The slowdowns appear to be due to a severe attack, and it takes in August of this year. It's uh, correct. The operator of the port of Seattle also ran Seattle Tacoma Airport. Following these cyber attacks, airport operations were slow because of the cyber attacks on port system. Consequently, tax, tasks and operations usually carried out by computer had to be done by hand. The new graph, graph fix we found the various sectors affected by cyber attacks in 2023, all around the world, not only in Europe or in France. It's important to notice that the four most impacted sectors are related to ports and logistics, with port operation, maritime building and maintenance, maritime and port logistics, and maritime transport. We have looked at the evolution of cyber attacks who is behind these cyber attacks? 
Here I just present the three most well-known actors are cyber criminals, activists, and state-sponsored actors. First, cyber criminals primarily aim to make money. They exploit vulnerability and use phishing to gain access to the victim systems, for example. Activists carry out attacks that damage the victim, victim's reputation. On social media, activist groups boast about the victims they have targets. Sometimes it's a website of a state or companies or so on. Finally, some states pay cyber criminals to obtain specific information about a company or another state. How do they gain access to their victim information system? On this next slide. Thanks. This is the three most common type of attacks we can see. The first one is ransomware. We want with cyber criminals encrypt data, locking system, and demanding payment to keep back information. These attacks are not specific to the port sector and can be found in other industries as well. Phishing is often used to infiltrate the system in order to extract, extract information, and DDoS attacks are frequently used by activists supporting a cause to make promotion. And here we have just the three, the consequences of a cyber attacks are numerous. There is a lot, there is a one that immediately comes to mind, it's financial loss. The shutdown of a post got many actors a significant amount of money. Cyber attacks can shut down power operation, leading to delay in cargo handling, shipping, delivery, and so on. Concerning reputation damage, a successful attack can erode trust among customers and business partners. Here we can port must develop and implement a robust cyber security framework that includes prevention, detection, response, and recovery measures. This work should be carried out on an ongoing basis, not just once. This work must be carried out by the world organization, not just by the IT departments. For example, conduct frequent assessment to identify and mitigate potential vulnerabilities, and cybersecurity awareness for all employees is crucial. Regular training can help prevent common attacks, like phishing, for example. Port should work with government agencies, private companies, or international bodies to share threat, threat intelligence and best practices. To improve organizational security, it's essential to implement monitoring tools can that can detect unusual activity in real time, such as security operation sector, SOC, and eight point detection and response system, EDR. Protecting sensitive data requires robust encryption and the establishment of threat access control based on the need to know principle to limit unauthorized access. Incident response plan should be developed and regularly updated to ensure rapid and effective action during the, an attack. It, especially since incidents often occur during half hour, like nights or weekends, not a Monday at 10. Additionally, it's important to verify and day to day monitoring sub party vendor to ensure. They adhere to a strong cybersecurity practice. To conclude, the cybersecurity and resilience and resilience of ports and logistics are not just about preventing attacks, but also about ensuring the continuity of operation in the face of threats. Combining technology, human expertise, and collaboration will be the key to building a resilient infrastructure. Actors must prioritize cybersecurity to safeguard global trade and national security, of course. And thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, so now we will go through uh, the first pitching session. 
with some use cases and solution uh, just to see also how the company um, deals with these threats uh, but also with these opportunities so we will uh, welcome from uh, Johannes sorry <laughs> from uh, Startport uh, Duisburg um, I think uh, Johannes you should be able to uh, to take control of this presentation to pass your slide okay perfect Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So my name is Johannes, Johannes Franke. Um, I'm Managing Director at Starport. Um, so we are an initiative of Duisport, the management company of the port of Duisburg, um, yeah, the largest interland port in the world regarding uh, the container throughput. So um, I will present uh, you something about Starport, what we are doing. And um, so let's start. So we are combining on, um, yeah, on the one hand, the, um, um, that's what the port is doing. So um, as Duisport, as a logistic service provider, we co combining the expertise and um, yeah, the infrastructure in the port of Duisburg with um, yeah, the network uh, we have. So we are partnering, partnering with um, a lot of companies from the port, um, yeah, from logistics and industries. And the goal is to, to foster innovations. So um, we want to bring together um, established companies from the port with, um, with startups um, developing innovative solutions. So the goal is to, to, yeah, to bring them together and to, to foster innovations. Um, yeah, so um, we are supporting our network and that's how we're doing this. So um, we have uh, today about 200 log tech and supply chain startups in our network. Um, and but we are doing a lot of uh, we are seeing a lot of more startups every year uh, in our screening process. So more than uh, 1,500 log tech and supply chain startups run through our screening process on a yearly basis, and we are working together with a lot of um, venture capital funds and business angels, um, focusing mostly all on in logistics. And um, yes, we have a regular uh, regular exchange with uh, more than 30. Um, yeah, venture capital force and business angels regarding deal flow. So we know, um, I think um, we have a good good basis knowing um, many, many startups in logistics uh, and supply chain. And yeah, the basis is, is yeah, it's mostly in, in Europe, but we uh, know a lot of startups also around the world. Um, so how are we working together with our partners from from the port? So um, yes, we we want to to establish innovation projects, and um, we um, yes want to to bring the established companies together with uh, the startups. And uh, yes, so the goal is that uh, the the startups and the companies are doing pilot projects together to to yeah to drive innovations. Um, we are doing events. Uh, for example, deep dive sessions on yeah on actual topics in logistics. For example, we did a deep dive um, in in spring um, on on innovations in intra logistics. But we are also doing in in autumn, end of October, a deep dive session on cybersecurity. I will explain later on because that's uh, the 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 topic today. And um, yeah, a lot of doing a lot of workshops and trainings to um, yeah to um, support our partners, for example, regarding communications or um, funding uh, funding projects. And um, yeah, the communication part is we're supporting some companies in our network um, on communications in uh, social media, um, mostly on LinkedIn. So we are supporting them to 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 establish yeah brand on on LinkedIn to to support uh, the people in the companies um, to make a personal brand on LinkedIn. Um, that's that's what we, do, we are doing on communications. That's our uh, partner network today. So um, besides our exclusive partners, besides Duisport, we are working together with um, yeah, other companies from the port. For example, um, with Bone Logistics is a uh, contract logistics provider, or um, Abitea. They are supporting um, companies in um, yeah in finding the right personnel, right workers. Um, but we have a lot of logistics and industry partners also um, from from logistics, use logistics and big contract logistic provider from from Japan, but also have strong network in in Germany. 
uh, based in, in, in Duisburg and Düsseldorf in our region. Um, yeah, we, we have a lot of startup supporters. Um, the companies are supporting our startups. Um, yeah, um, um, regarding workshops or coachings, for example, and our financial network consisting of business angels and um, venture capital firms. So that's just one one example, but I think it's it's explaining um, good how we are working together with with uh, companies. So um, the, the startup Forcon, they are developing um, a fleet management solution for forklifts. Um, yeah, they, uh, the, the solution is, is working with, I think, every uh, forklift manufacturer. So they are um, independent regarding the, the forklift uh, manufacturers and they are bringing more transparency in, in forklifts and forklift, uh, forklifts fleets. So um, um, some years ago, uh, Duisport did a pilot project with Forkorn. They, uh, they have tested the solution. And um, this year, Duisport decided to uh, select Forkorn um, as, um, yeah, as a fleet uh, operator, fleet management operator for all forklifts in the, in the Duisport group. I think uh, nearly 100 forklifts, uh, they are now um, yeah, tracked by by the fork uh, on solution and yeah, bringing more transparency in the fleet of forklifts. Uh, in on end of October, 29th uh, October, we are doing um, a deep dive session on cybersecurity in logistics um, together with Q5. Q5 is an accelerator uh, for cybersecurity startups based in Bochum at the Horst Gertz Institute for Cybersecurity. And um, yeah, we're doing that, this together with, with them because they have big, big uh, and a good network um, on, on cybersecurity startups. We're doing it at our office in Duisburg. So if you would like to join the session and have the time to come to Duisburg, you have, um, yeah, you're welcome to, to attend at the session. We're starting um, at um, yeah, 2, 2 p.m., have some, some keynotes, presentations, but also have a startup fair at our um, office and um, yeah, uh, we, uh, we are looking forward for um, to meet you maybe in, in Duisburg there. So um, I think that's that's my last question, but I, but I would like to, to um, yes, to um, say something about what we are looking for and how we can, how you can work with us. So we are looking for corporates with challenges in logistics who are open to partnerships with startups. So um, yeah. If you'd like to, to get in contact with us, uh, feel free to, to uh, contact me. And we are open to, to funding projects where we can contribute as an innovation ecosystem. So that's the other, um, I think, maybe interesting topic for, for today. So that's it from my side. Thank you for your attention. And I would like to hand over to my um, yeah, next, to the next speaker. Thank you, Janis. Very interesting presentation. And now we will uh, welcome Vitor Lory. Um, who will present uh, companies? Vitor, are you able to? Yes, uh, Thomas, can you put the presentation up again? Because it just disappeared. Okay, so just a minute. Okay. Do you see it? Mm. Okay, it should, it should. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming now. Are you able to take? Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you, Rita. Sorry. No problem. Let me just find my deck. The my presentation is a little bit uh, off topic for the for the cybersecurity in the. Uh, in the ports and, and harbors, but it affects uh, cybersecurity in marine power, maritime power systems, so uh, aboard the vessels. And here we, Dive is a uh, leader in, in uh, instrumentation and power energy management devices, uh, control systems for the maritime industry. 
and we want to enable uh, fast adoption of uh, cleaner technology, uh, cleaner energy sources, and um, and thus st state uh, our our promise to improve tomorrow. Uh, why cybersecurity? We we have to understand uh, that it becomes a critical need uh, when we face an industry in transformation. The transformation of the industry was uh, was mentioned by Laura in the keynote. Uh, we see the opportunities to improve operational efficiency. We see um, more opportunities for uh, and for enhanced safety of um, of traffic uh, of the vessels. And there's also a part of compliance with the new regulations that come uh, regarding emission um, reporting. So there is definitely an impact towards sustainability, environmental impact that will uh, that will improve uh, in the industry by digitalizing. Of course, uh, Laura mentioned, and I will not repeat this one. I will just uh, skip this slide. Uh, there are a number of cyber threats in power systems that can lead to a number of malicious uh, actions, uh, and that can affect both uh, from an infrastructure part on the on the harbors but also the vessels themselves and we could get uh, vessels stuck um, in 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 ports because they are not able to move fortunately uh, IX is uh, very aware of um, of the challenges um, also the the number of cyber attacks has, has risen so among the various uh, regulations coming for cyber resilience, uh, UR E26 gives uh, cyber resilience of, of uh, vessels, of ships, and uh, UR, uh, the unified uh, requirement E27, uh, is talking about the systems on board the, the vessels. So when we talk about uh, how, what we do to embrace uh, cyber resilience we uh, and deliver the system components that did, that support this digital transformation we have uh, we have selected just uh, a few highlight uh, features from the, the that that meet the unified uh, requirement uh, these are a root of trust based on the hardware a secure boot uh, for the connection uh, for the for the whole uh, control device and then safe, safe and signed updates uh, with uh, Rauk. Then um, these these three are very interlinked as I will show you in the next slide. Uh, aside from this there's also uh, a new way to 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 have uh, unique users and role-based permissions coming from the IT world um, and finally introduced into this uh, type of control uh, devices. So if we talk about secure boot and the hardware based um, root of trust, uh, it's, it's basically a system that permits that any software that is signed and certified by the manufacturer runs inside uh, our products. So only uh, so software that is made by us can run in our hardware. Basically, it's what it means. Alongside that, that's that's re that's um, reassured by by having a hardware uh, key that's fused on the hardware, and then we have two chains of um, or two partitions that can be used to secure to secure the connection. So if by any means some um uh malicious actor can enter a uh, can enter the active partition then the system will fall back to an inactive partition and turn that one active so that uh, it breaks that um, that attack the in terms of uh, you Users, we are looking to enhance security and have a more simplified administration by, by having unique users. So that increases the sense of responsibility of, of these users uh, because now their name is attached to, to their actions uh, and also a, a deeper uh, role management process. So that uh, 
users are authorized to do certain actions, but they cannot act beyond the scope of of those um, of those roles that have been assigned to them. To deliver on our promise, we have uh, a number of um, of products in a range of power energy management and programmable control devices uh, that are specifically designed to uh, to allow the fast adoption of the new energy sources and also rise to the challenges posed by malicious and criminal cyber activities. Uh, this is the intelligent energy, uh, i.e. Uh, controller family, where we can offer PLCs um, and control devices uh, also with a nice um, new technology on the uh, touch touch screens um, control operator panels uh, all of these uh, products are uh, already approved by the NV for uh, the e the UR e27 and we will now pursue the approval from all major IX members for compliance to the same standards in cybersecurity. And that was the end of my presentation. I thank you for your attention. And uh, feel free to contact me at vlo at dive.com if you have any uh, questions. And back to you, Thomas. Thank you, Victor. And we will have now um, the CEO of Jet Connectivity, James Thomas, who will present uh, his companies and his solutions. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes, perfectly. Super. Thanks ever so much. So my name is James Thomas. I'm the CEO and founder of Jet Connectivity. Uh, we provide floating mobile phone technology in large data platforms. One of the, um, the, the biggest things we see as a problem space is the lack of connectivity impacting uh, quite so heavily in this space. So we have been working quite heavily to build a number of large ocean platforms. You can see a render of one of them here. Uh, we've got two of these in real life. So there are two of these for real now. Um, the piece that we see as very valuable is we see that there is a, a, a clear need for hosting of sensors and hosting of data at sea. And within that hosting of sensor and data is a need for connectivity. Connectivity not just provides us with the the backbone to transfer that data, but it also means we can do a lot of different things. So one of, one of the things uh, I, I will start with is where did we come from? So we started the business in August 2020, uh, where we built a small 5G floating platform. In 2021, we built a larger 5G platform, which talked to the first one. So uh, those two first images, we have the boy on the left talking to the boy next to it via a 5G link. So it's a 5G mesh network at sea. That means we yeah. are completely resilient to a lot of different things. And we don't need fiber optics for our mobile networks. The interesting piece then is we realized there was a lot of need to build something larger, more stable, and a lot more uh, ocean going, which is when we spent 22 um, developing a large ocean platform. The large ocean platform we were developing um, is 22 meters tall, weighs 33 tons, um, and has around about 100 kilowatt hours of battery pack and 10 kilowatt of solar panel. So it is a huge ocean platform. Uh, we did the first launch in 2023 uh, of one of these, and we've now got two of them in. in. They're going out to different wind farms and different ports and harbors. So they're, they're doing a number of different use case trials as we speak. In parallel to the ocean side of things, we built radios. So in 2020, we built small radios that were um, UEs. Uh, so they were mobile phone routers. We then um, connected them in a lot of different safety and security use cases for um, the government under a funded program called 5G test beds and trials. Um, where we put them on police ribs, we put them on first responder vehicles like ambulances, and we did a lot of work in that space uh, with some of our partners. We then built a 5G mesh network, which you can see in 2021, um, whereby we started to understand what the benefits of it could be in the number of nodes we could deploy in a single instance. In 2022, we started then to build our own RAM that could use that mesh technology. 
so that was when we started to build the 5g elements of the of the the ran being the the base station if you would um whereas previously we built the mobile phone element um, and the routing then in 2023 we started to um, look at what we could do with our platforms so that was when we built our mvp platform as i've mentioned uh, but we partnered with people like microsoft and we also built the iab software for fdd We've been selling our capability into a number of places in the security uh, market. Um, so we have customers such as HMGCC in the UK um, and the MOD, so that's the security services and our Ministry of Defence. We have a lot of different uh, trials and use cases they're using them for across that service. Um, ob obviously, I'm not going to go into all of the defence use cases today, um, but there's, there's a different number, whether it's on land, sea or air. So that's been where we've sort of gone to date. One of the things we find in probably the most impactful is for security, we have interoperability, uh, we have resilience, we have fiberless connectivity. And therefore what we have is we have an ability to build without a weak point, a, a network that is very, very reliable, resilient for safe, secure, sustainable, smart operations. So within that, um, it enables the digitalization of data. Um, it enables a lot of the cyber security issues we see currently. So um, one of the things that's very good with 5G is it's um, 256 being encrypted at release 18. So it means that we have quite a high level of cyber built into the, the stack as a basis. Um, we see use cases from ports, harbors, all the way through to wind farms and vessel operators. And our technology doesn't have to be mounted on buoys. The radios could be just used on vessels or on land as well. But we have a number of different use cases and trials that we're going through. Um, so I think there's a, a lot of different use of where we could use our technology in that space. And we're looking for partners. So we're looking for people who want to collaborate, port harbor owners, operators, shipping operators and logistics. Um, and I think um, within that, it, it means that we're really looking for people who want to collaborate um, and help use our real time connectivity and data. Um, as a UK sovereign capability, um, we have a complete UK software bill of materials. We have a complete understanding of what goes into our technology. So we're absolutely able to play with more of the exciting users as well uh, who have, might have some specific use cases. We're also looking for technology providers with solutions, so sensors, power businesses, uh, to integrate with our network and floating infrastructure. So for an example, we've been working with a interesting biofouling coating business. Uh, we're also working with some different sensor businesses, some data AI businesses. We have a lot of different partners in our, our technology stack, uh, which enables us to get to where we've got to. We're also looking for cybersecurity partners. Um, specifically at the edge um, will be the, the main piece for us. Um, so within that space, one of the things we're really interested in is meeting people that can help get our, our level of encryption even higher than it currently is, um, and potentially hardware-based encryption or quantum security. So they're, they're the sort of pieces we're looking for. But thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to meet everyone today. And um, hopefully you'll be able to get in touch. Um, my email um, I can give, which is james at jet-eng.com. And if it's okay, I'll put that in the chat. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, James. Uh, and do not hesitate to also write in the um, Q and uh, R uh, section, um, and we can answer it at the end of, uh, of the presentation. Um, so now I will go to um, to a presentation of the organizing uh, networks, so enterprise Europe networks and European digital innovation hubs, to see how. We can help you in your um, digital path or uh, in your transitions. So um, we welcome Cornelia um, from uh, EN that will present the EN services uh, offered to you, um, companies uh, or associations. Thank you, but I have a co-speaker, right? <laughs> <laughs> And Michael, of course. Yes. <laughs> Michael is starting. That's why, why I was uh, confused. <laughs> Sorry, uh, sure. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> yeah. So, will I be able to take it from here? I just don't know. Uh, can you make a shift for me, please? 
I think, Cognidia, you're uh, on the control. Oh, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, just swap to the next one, uh, Cornelia. Um, thank you very much for, for inviting us, uh, Thomas. Um, uh, we are the Enterprise Europe Network. Uh, Thomas is part from here, uh, and Cornelia Schweizer is Schweizer, right? Uh, is my uh, co-organizer in uh, uh, or co-speaker in this event here. Uh, to give you a bit of information on Enterprise Europe Network, also better known as EEN, we are set to be the world's largest business-to-business uh, -business network, uh, present uh, right now uh, in 40 countries uh, or more, and with 450 host organizations. We have the massive uh, um, presence uh, in, the e in the EU with the um, presence in, in each region uh, we have offices. We'll be located in uh, different areas. Uh, we might be in the uh, Chamber of Commerces, in the uh, EU offices, in uh, uh, business uh, um, parks, and uh, uh, also in relation to universities. Um, and our uh, aim is to, uh, to help uh, the SMEs and uh, and also the um, universities to uh, to uh, improve on their international uh, ambitions. Next slide, please. Uh, our services are prepaid by the EU Commission, so we are funded by the EU Commission, and thereby we are free service. Um, and our aim is to to um, initiate the uh, the cross border. Uh, operations, cross-border ambitions, and uh, uh, to advise the, the SMEs on the digital resilience and sustainability uh, in, uh, in relation to uh, development. We have uh, been formed in different uh, uh, industrial uh, groups, and uh, we are structured uh, with, within the EU Commission's uh, line of uh, industrial ecosystems. Present today here, the maritime sector group, uh, which I represent, and uh, the uh, uh, the digital uh, sector group as well. Next, please. Uh, the maritime group, we are uh, at present like 55 to 60 members from uh, 23 countries. Uh, we meet physically two times a year, uh, and our aim is to support the SMEs by being regional. Uh, and uh, help uh, assisting in the innovation projects with the international changes and partnering also. Uh, apart from that, we conduct uh, matchmaking brokerage events and we assist in uh, business missions uh, where um, a group of companies would like to uh, take advantage of uh, the, the help on, on, uh, on a local level in, in different countries. Uh, next one, please. Yeah, just uh, the the uh, the scope of the maritime environment, obviously ports and uh, ports logistics uh, is a very key uh, area for our our goals. Next, please. I'll leave it to you, Cornelia. Thank you very much, Michael. Yes, uh, I'm Cornelia. I'm actually here for my colleague, Benno Weisner. He's the chair of the sector group Digital. Um, <clears throat> but I've also been a member since uh, 2019. And uh, yeah, the sector group Digital has about 270 members and is uh, present in 55 countries. So it's one of the largest sector groups within the Enterprise Europe Network. And uh, I think it really highlights uh, the importance of um, anything digital in today's world. Um, yeah, we're very happy that it's such a vibrant and hardworking group, and um, it's always great to collaborate with the other sector groups within the network um, and some of the focus groups that we have in the in the digital realm is um, of course horizon europe so we also give uh, finance advice or access to to finance we call it um, where we help you find research partners and apply to the funding programs especially of course to the funding programs from the uh, european union 
Um, <clears throat> we are cooperating with the um, European Digital Innovation Hub. So like today, it's a great um, collaboration. And um, yeah, we are, we are very happy that we can do this together and provide um, yeah, services to, to companies together. And um, yeah, of course, a focus area is the artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things uh, because it's just so important nowadays. And we also help um, implement those things across the sectors. So like today in the maritime sector or um, also textile, tourism. Um, yeah, we have a lot of collaborations going. And um, so what are we actually offering you as SMEs or startups? Um, we can help you expand the businesses to new markets because we have all these people in the different countries. So the experts really on the ground that uh, know the people, know the information um, that you need to expand uh, to that market. Um, <clears throat> just like that, we also find uh, for you new subcontractors or production partners or technology and research partners. So we also have a great platform that helps us to um, form consortia for the Horizon Europe programs, because those always need uh, a lot of partners from different countries, which is hard to do when you're just uh, yeah, sitting in one country. Um, and then, of course, it's our our job to uh, follow up over over time and see what happened, uh, what came out of your uh, our advice to your business, and um, if you succeeded, then uh, you sign partnership agreements. Basically, um, then we can. Um, tell the European Union uh, that you're now working with a company in a different country and uh, that is basically our our KPIs for the European Union. That's how we can um, provide these services uh, for free to the companies. Yeah, and of course the impact that we all want to see is the job creation, is the job maintenance, um, main yeah, maintenance and the resilience um, that we would like to see in the companies within the European Union and um, beyond. And of course, the increased turnover and earnings. And that's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. And we would be very happy to um, yeah, help you. Please feel free to approach us after the webinar as well. Thank you. Thank you, Cornelia. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> and again, sorry, Michael. Um... I represent also, uh, and I will speak on behalf of the uh, the, the um, European Digital Innovation Web uh, Network. So uh, a network uh, that is quite recent compared to uh, to EEN, um, but co-funded by the European Commission um, and dedicated to the digital transition of uh, SMEs, uh, especially. <coughs> So um, the European Digital Innovation Hub Network um, is composed of uh, more than 151 um, EDs located in uh, every region um, in Europe. So uh, basically, a European Digital Innovation Hub is a support facility that empowers companies to become more competitive um, by supporting their digital transformation. Um, with the mission of accelerating digital transformation across the EU, ensure that 90% uh, um, of SMEs have at least a basic level of digital competency, but to transform 75% um, of the EU companies uh, into cloud uh, or AI or uh, big data users, um, but also cyber security. And uh, the objective is to achieve the, the, the target uh, of the EU's digital decade uh, 2030. Uh, regarding the, the service we, we provide, um, so we have uh, small and medium sized companies, but also mid caps and public sector organizations uh, to respond to their digital challenges um, by providing access to technical expertise and testing. So, test, we call it test before invest. Um, you will have uh, access to facilities um, and infrastructure to, to develop um, proof of concept um, with uh, subsidies from the, from the European Union. And this is really um, an opportunity for you to, uh, to, to test these uh, technologies before investing. Um, we also provide some innovation services, uh, financial advices, uh, training and skills uh, development. Um, so we try also to uh, to have this um, uh, support uh, in tackling environmental issues uh, using digital technologies, uh, because we are well aware that uh, adding some uh, digital feature to uh, 
to your um, carbon emission is not mm. always uh, a good way to do. So we are really careful on uh, the digital transition we want to to uh, to implement. So uh, these are the different different types of services we can provide. Um, you will have access to to this presentation after the the webinar, so you can. Uh, uh, check uh, in more details what we, we can provide, but uh, concretely, how does it work? Um, so as I said, there is a, a, an EDI um, probably in your region, so uh, you can uh, have access to the EDI network uh, and the catalog of EDI uh, to see uh, who is located next to you. So you can um, have a contact with the, the, the advisors and they will um, support you in your, in your digital transition, um, either on, uh, on um, having a matchmaking with solution providers or uh, developing uh, your, uh, your digital skills. So please check uh, the, 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 the website if you are interested, if you are in digital transition, and we are uh, really happy to, to, to help you. Uh, on behalf of the of the network, um, and also if you don't find uh, the competencies you need in your region, this is really the the, um, the importance of this network. Uh, it works all over Europe. So if you need a competence uh, that is located somewhere else, um, we can also uh, have this matchmaking to to find the most suitable services and uh, competencies you need. Uh, to achieve your uh, your objective and to ensure that you stay competitive uh, thanks to the digital um, skills. So thank you very much and um, do not hesitate to, to contact me if you want more uh, details. Now we will have um, uh, another round of uh, pitches. So two companies will pitch and they are really also on the, on the cyber security um, aspect of uh, arbors and, and logistics. So uh, we will welcome um, Emil uh, from uh, Segul Surveillance. Uh, Emil, are you able to to take control of the presentation? Seems yes. <laughs> we don't hear you at the moment, Dennis. So we don't hear you. Okay, okay. good morning. My name is uh, Emil Spruit. Everybody can hear me? Yes, thank good. you. Uh, I'm from Seagull Surveillance. Um, we are a company in Amsterdam. Uh, we develop software with uh, AI features. And uh, with Seagull, we developed a product that through CCTV systems in ports and marinas, we can detect all kinds of vessels um, that's what we do we started uh, three years ago in Scheveningen port of uh, near the, the Hague and uh, we um, extend it now in other ports uh, mainly Europe uh, now um, we started with uh, with a solution for Scheveningen they um, do have um, uh, AIS um, a system that detects all AI systems um, of, of all vessels that are approaching the port, uh, but not, not all vessels, all uh, boats have AIS, um, and they needed a solution for that, uh, mainly because um, boats that carry illegal goods um, don't like AIS, they don't want to be followed, um, but also uh, fishing boats that are obligated to have AIS, they can switch it off and um, um, they uh, do their illegal activities at sea. And once they get back, they switch on the AIS again. Um, but our system do detect uh, fishing boats and because, um, hey, this is a fishing boat. It has the AIS switched off because it's not connected with the database. Um, so um, take care of, of this and do an uh, investigation. But also, um, if we look at the sea, we can see um, in this case, uh, immigrants or uh, um, uh, on a small rip, people approaching the coast and or leaving the coast, we can detect uh, a vessel like uh, this and and well and and alert the um, um, the police or the coast guard to take action and then well, save their lives. Um, 
it's um, it goes through existing uh, cameras um, where we uh, just uh, make the calculation through the uh, with AI say hey and this is the detection um, it, the advantage it says is it goes um, 24 7 automated um, it detects all kinds of vessels very large or very small also a rip or a jet ski can be uh, detected and it eliminates all the human errors of, of using this uh, the software um, and mainly also the the reason why larger ports like our product um, is it's a scalable product um, it's easier to have um, a group of, of uh, cctv operators watching screens where we uh, say hey there is a detection look uh, look at this uh, uh, part then that they have to look at uh, three or four hundred screens um on their own um so that's why large ports like to use it as as well um so it fills in the gap between as and and radar system um that's the uh, basic uh, equipment uh, ports have um that's how they uh, they oversee the whole operation but well uh, they now come to the conclusion that they don't see uh, everything uh, the dark vessels so the vessel that's been switched off the smaller facial pressure uh, pleasure crafts um that's what they don't detect and that's why they like to use our our system um this is um uh, the automated alerts in in scheveningen very easy to see uh, from this part what comes in and what comes out it's it's been used for the entrance of the port but also uh, it's uh, faced on on a, on a beach uh, here which is very known for a place where uh, drugs are being dropped so a rip approaches the beach and they drop their um, illegal goods it's being taken into a, a new a, a car and the car drives off it happens just within a minute and um, uh, with AI we can detect already the rip approaching the port and we can alert the um, uh, the harbor master in this case um, to take uh, to take action um, there's a logbook which is maybe not that interesting for uh, interested in uh, for this uh, uh, seminar um, um, in this case uh, the AI we have what is interesting is um, uh, at least the uh, privacy legislation which has been taken care of and also the EU Act uh, API integration um, and easy install let me quickly go further um, the AI that's been set up through the existing cameras it's on uh, detection areas we can uh, we can activate say hey give me an alert on this specific part when a boat comes in there um, so it's easy to to manage if you have a, a, a larger part of a video that's looking over the water otherwise you have um, alerts all the time um, there's another part you see here fishing boat leaving the uh, the port uh, it, it says in the uh, in the logbook okay a fishing boat uh, this size with this speed leaving uh, the boat towards uh, leaving the port and it uh, keeps uh, a record of this uh, uh, of this happening um, um, for for two weeks <clears throat> also at night it's an easy uh, uh, it's a registration tool um, because some ports are closed uh, at night uh, so in the morning they want to know what happens in the port which boats come in which can uh, go out um, and they can determine if it's an uh, if it's something illegal happening or a fishing boat or anything they want to know what what happened they they have a record in uh, in the morning um different alerts on different uh events so uh, in the middle of the night for example port of rotterdam that's maybe very easy <laughs> a straightforward uh, 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 setting uh, in the middle of the night a rip uh, approaching a container ship uh, in rotterdam um it's it's a hard uh, uh, no uh, in this case pretty sure there's something illegal happening so you want to have an alert so you can approach more proactive um, so it's very easy to to do this and in this case you're really looking at a, a dashboard of seagull our own dashboard uh, but we do offer uh, uh, integrations with uh, genetech or milestone 
different VMS uh, systems. Um, and also in this case, we, this is a part on, on, um, uh, on, a sea, uh, sea, uh, on the coastline, detecting a very small vessel here, quite far away. Uh, there's an alert now um, uh, going in to the VMS and uh, the, the authorities are picking up uh, on that. Um, our la latest uh, victory is um, an extension of our cooperation with the Port of Rotterdam, 500 cameras that, that are going, we're going to uh, build uh, into the uh, system um, and um, well, taking care of the whole port, overseeing uh, every corner um, where there might be uh, a situation where we want to take uh, well, to take action upon. Um, so we are very proud of, of this and now we're looking into the future um, and, and finding other uh, ports that wants to use our system. And we're looking, um, yeah, or for resellers, uh, and they say, hey, we are we are installing cameras and CCTV ca uh, systems in ports. That's something we do not do. We only separate the software. Um, and um, for them, it's interesting to offer an additional service to the sport um, and, and uh, using our system. So on that side, we're looking for resellers. And on the other side, we're looking for ports. Maybe let's link now, say, hey, this is interesting. We only look with our cameras uh, land side, but we have no idea what happens uh, on the waters. And it's um, very expensive to uh, to operate a system looking over the waters all the time. Um, but with Seagull, it's an, an, a very efficient and effective way to, to, do con to take control on the waters. Um, so again, also there, we uh, would like to, uh, to to get in touch with these uh, uh, parties and uh, for sure demonstrate and, and, and do a trial and have them experience the uh, the uh, way Seagull works and then um, oh, then we take it from there. So this is my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, do reach out. Um, follow our LinkedIn page of uh, Seagull Surveillance. Uh, we have a lot of updates there. We share know-how on how uh, to fight illegal activities in the in the ports. Um, it's not always uh, the, the threats are not always online, but also offline. So in this case, uh, we can uh, fight shoulder to shoulder. So again, feel free to reach out to me if you want uh, any uh, any more uh, information. Thank you very much, and um, I'll uh, thank you, Norma Cyber. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Then a very interesting, very impressive presentation. Um, and yeah, please contact me. So, okay. So I think I will have to uh, to re uh, to represent. And um, our last uh, speaker would be Lars. Um, just a minute. I'm sorry, Lars. I just need to. Did I do that presentation? Yeah, but no problem. <laughs> it's because when you you, you finish, to, no problem. Um, oh. All right. Uh, how's my sound? Can you hear me all right? Yes, perfectly, Lars. Uh, I'm just going through the. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so you can yeah. go to. So then yeah. hopefully you can see a, see a slide uh, with uh, Norma Cyber also. Yes. Perfect. Super. So my name is Lars Benjamin Wall. I'm the managing director at the Nordic Maritime Cyber Resilience Center, uh, Norm, Norma Cyber. Uh, and I've been that since we established Norma uh, in 2021, so three and a half years now. And I was also the project manager for establishing the center um, the one and a half years ahead from the start. So I'll tell you during this presentation just a very quick introduction to Norma, uh, some of the things we do already and some of the partners we are looking for within the technology landscape and some other types of partners. Um, and I know it's uh, now it's uh, we have, you've seen many presentations, so I'll, I'll keep it relatively short and then I'm also open for questions and comments also afterwards. So uh, Norma Cyber is established uh, by the Norwegian ship owners. So we are a non-profit organization. We are established by ship owners in Norway. Uh, and um, and uh, this has led the initiative by the Norwegian Ship Owner Association and something called the Norwegian War Risk Insurance Club. So that means, I'm really sorry. Sorry. 
Sorry about that. Um, so that means um, we are owned and controlled by Norwegian ship owners, but uh, the demand or the criteria to become a member of Norma is that you are a maritime organization in the Nordic countries. And we just expanded earlier this year from Norway to the Nordic countries. So now it's also possible for other types of uh, maritime companies, uh, such as ports and shipbuilders and other working with, uh, within aquaculture or uh, maritime um, technology deliver. Uh, the delivery companies is possible to become a member of Norma. We already have quite a few members. Uh, we have uh, close to 120 members represented with close to 2,500 vessels and offshore units. Uh, and we have quite a few OEMs uh, and uh, other types of maritime vendors already part of this. Um, and that's basically the key, to, key uh, thing with Norma. Um, we are meant as to be a non-commercial a uh, trusted advisor for our members uh, so that we can facilitate information sharing and build some common resources within incident and crisis response and other types of services uh, to build. Basically, in short, it means to be more effective, uh, to, to leverage those initiatives, which is more effective to do from a central unit like this than to build it up separately. Um, by the companies. And uh, yes, as Laura mentioned in the initial presentation from France Cyber Maritime, uh, we are very happy to collaborate uh, with France Cyber Maritime also and have an information sharing agreement with, uh, with them and a collaboration agreement. And um, uh, we also from this year have a, uh, a government tasking from the Norwegian government. So that means also we get funding from the government to uh, to handle or help them handle severe uh, cybersecurity incidents towards the Norwegian maritime sector. So yes, we are a pr private initiative. We are a non-profit private initiative, but we also have a uh, example here of public-private collaboration, where we do some of the tasks for on behalf of the government. Um, when it comes to the services we provide, um, the ones on the top here is very similar to what you uh, saw Laura present from France Cyber Maritime. We are a, a hub for information sharing um, and threat intelligence. So we encourage members to share information with us um, if they see suspected activity or signs of compromise and so on. And we also, of course, then do have information sharing agreements. We do also purchase information uh, from uh, commercial providers and we try to to then report to our members on how maritime uh, attacks are taking place, um, how the cyber uh, cyber uh, threat actors are uh, targeting maritime organizations and how you can secure yourself better. We do have an incident and crisis response standby. Uh, and um, through that, we handle about 30 to 40 incidents every year uh, and help our members with that. It's a part of the membership fee as part of the membership, it doesn't cost anything extra to call us and to activate us and for us to respond. And that means also it's a great uh, source of information because many members have a low threshold to contact us. So throughout the years uh, now, we have handled more than 100 incidents on behalf of the members. Most of these are within corporate systems, uh, but also we see vessels and uh, also port infrastructure being attacked, but mostly affecting the IT side of things. Um, when it comes to our additional services at the bottom, we do now, uh, uh, we have provided a additional service uh, called the Managed Security Operations Center service. This is a, actually a security monitoring service for member infrastructure, either vessels or land-based infrastructure. Now, when we are doing this as a nonprofit and, and kind of a member represented organization, we are very, um, very cautious to do this in, an, in a technology agnostic way and a vendor agnostic way. So we try to leverage the security protocols and the security logs there already and try to do, do it as cost effective as possible. But we have a very good uh, setup which leverage these technologies already in place. Uh, we try to distribute as little equipment as possible. Normally for IT on vessels or ports, we don't have to distribute any hardware at all. Uh, and we use AI in the background uh, to be able to detect threats as early as possible and baseline uh, the activity and look for deviations from the baselines. Uh, we also perform penetration testing. Uh, this is where we actually can do security testing for members. Um, 
and uh, simulate attacks. And of course, then for both of these additional services, we try to leverage some additional synergies because since we are doing it, we are able to take out anonymized statistics. We're able to feed that back to the members. Uh, also, when it comes to penetration testing, when we're doing findings, we try to uh, ask to do uh, an anonymized report, which we can send out to all members or present it during some of our member uh, member meetings and so on. So we try to get out some extra synergies of this. Um, when it comes to some of the partnerships we are looking for, um, we are looking for technology partners and uh, other relevant partners working within some of these niche areas, right? Because we are talking about cybersecurity in the maritime domain is really a niche area, and especially when it comes to security monitoring of these systems in the maritime industry, it's quite a niche. So we're looking always for partners and try to do this in a more effective way, especially within vessel IT or vessel operational technology or port operational technology or other kind of these niche areas. Um, also, we are looking for uh, partner organizations to work with in EU cybersecurity projects and initiatives. Um, and of course, we're always looking for new members. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we are also just expanded to the Nordic countries. So if you are a, um, a maritime organization in the Nordic region, you can also just feel free to reach out. And that um, summarizes my presentation. I'm open for some questions um, and uh, please feel free to reach out also afterwards. And that's, uh, that's it really for me. Thank you very much. And I will I will try not to press the stop sharing button so you can take over the slides now. So over to you, Thomas. Sorry. <laughs> so um, thank you very much, Lars. Um, and uh, before going to the Q and A uh, session. I would like to, uh, to to have a big thanks for uh, for all the speakers. Uh, they were very good to keep the timing, <laughs> so um, that let us also uh, uh, more time to uh, to have question and uh, answer them. So um, again, to the to the participant, uh, feel free to to ask question um, either in the in the chat or in the Q and R uh, section, and we have time to um, to enter it. And um, otherwise, uh, you can contact us uh, at EEN or DIH um, to get in touch also with uh, the company um, if you want. And um, we will just just to to say that we will come back to you uh, with a feedback survey after a while because um, we want to organize also uh, similar events. And we really, we really want to uh, these events to benefit uh, you uh, as participants. So uh, you will receive uh, this feedback survey with uh, some topics uh, you want, would like to see uh, in, in future webinars, or if you are interested also to to pitch or to uh, to discuss. And maybe we can uh, start uh, crafting something uh, collaboratively. Um, uh, that benefits uh, all of us, and uh, that could be that could lead to uh, to future collaboration. So thank you also for your attendance, and thank you um, in advance for uh, filling this uh, this feedback uh, questionnaire. So um, now uh, we have time to, for questions. So just feel free to to write in the in the comments. So we have one question from uh, Ivan. Um, so I think uh, all the speakers can, can you precise Ivan maybe, uh, <laughs> who is it uh, addressed to? Uh, Amy? Yes, I think it's for Amy, how VDS AI 2.0 can support the utilization of maritime communication sector. So for, for maritime authorities, so you mean uh, for for Emil or for Lars? <laughs> I think it was for Emil, right? Mm. Can you give a little bit more context on your question? Mm. 
Ivan Micro directement, pas tes yeux, quand même. Thomas, the, the question of Ivan. Uh, yeah, is it, uh, have you explored uh, how VDES uh, and AIS 2.0 can support the digitalization of the maritime communication sector, uh, particularly in improving cybersecurity? Um, no, I can really say something. Uh, to, to, to avoid spoofing, as an example. No, what I will do, I'll get back to the to the team and I'll come to I'll um, come back with an answer on that, which is uh, which is more um, say more about that. And maybe uh, last currently, uh, currently we have uh, we work with different uh, VMS uh, systems where there's um, they get feed from an AS database and we feed the same. Our cameras are calibrated on different positions. It's a fixed camera, so we know which direction the cameras uh, are um, looking at, which which direction. Um, and when a vessel comes by, we know exactly which point it is. And this point we feed into the VMS system or our own dashboard. And then there is a match with the AIS uh, uh, database. So that's more on that level we are working in. Um, but let me get more into the deep. Maybe the development team is on that part. Um, and I'm not always communicating with them. There are 30 people, so I'm not talking to them every day. So um, I'll get back to you on that, uh, Ivan. Okay. okay. So can you send me the, your email address? I can provide you also with a uh, even contact uh, oh, after perfect. writing. Yes. Great. <laughs> but you, you write it, okay. On the, on the okay, I'll get the uh, touch. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you for your question. And thank you. Um, are there any other questions from the participants or everything was <laughs> clear? So yeah, again, uh, do not hesitate to contact the, the speaker if you want to go further. I know that can be also from confidential uh, matters. So it's not always easy to to um, to ask this question, but uh, Please do so. Uh, all the, part, the, the the speaker are really uh, into uh, engaging collaboration. So, <laughs> just. Uh, There any other question? Yes, there is another question from uh, Margarita. Um, so she's representing uh, Cyprus EU-based cybersecurity company. And you want, you want to be in touch with several members of this presentation. So of course, we will uh, provide also the link uh, and the, the contact uh, um, to, to, to get in touch with them. Any other question, or maybe we we are um, we are good. And <laughs> we, we, we won't bother you um, much more time to that. Um, again, thank you to uh, to all the speakers for their very uh, impressive presentation. Um, and I think that uh, we have uh, good ideas, good ex example of solutions uh, dedicated to cybersecurity and resilience uh, in our both in, in logistics. Um, so maybe next time we will explore uh, new topics and also uh, we'll be able to to decide and uh, to um, to think with us uh, what you want to to appear as a, as a topic. So um, I think we can we can quit the meeting for now. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attendance. Uh, thank you very much for your contributions. And uh, 
we will get back to you soon with uh, with matchmaking opportunities and, and collaboration. So um, yeah. thank you very much for. <laughs> thank you. Oh, goodbye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye.